Okay, we are starting the Welland Canal. Today is Tuesday, August 22nd. Is that correct? Yes. 22nd. Correct. And this is the town of... Uh, Port Colburn. Port Colburn, great. I'm forgetting where we are. It's also 6.30 in the morning. So we got a green light on the bridge up there. This is the first part of the Welland Canal. And we are going through with our friends on Pearl behind us. So, who are from Portsmouth, but not from Portsmouth. Yeah, who are, yeah, yeah, they're using Portsmouth as their tax haven, I think. Um, so, yeah, so this is the first part of the Welland where you go through this bridge, and the big question is will they let you go before commercial traffic? So, um, as, as the person with the New York um, Canal Authority told us, we're, we're second class citizens on the Welland because. Um, it's just so important for them to send commercial traffic through first. So you never know whether they're going to be able to let you go. You say you're ready to go and they may tell you to wait a day. They may tell you to wait an hour. They told us, okay, go. So we're, we're moving. So here's the weights on the, um, that help the bridge rise up. Yeah, we have great clearance overhead. Yeah, good, good. Okay, that's, that's avenue number one. 21st Street Bridge. Okay. All right, so we're chugging down the canal here. Um, as Karen showed you a minute ago, we went through a bridge, and then down a little further, we went underneath a second bridge into the first lock, which is Lock 8, and then out a bridge immediately following. So first lock was interesting because uh, the bridge right at the beginning, bridge right at the end. It's a, what they call an equalizing lock, and it, the amount of drop in the lock depends upon the level of the lake, Lake Erie. Um, sometimes we went through and dropped about four feet. You may drop four feet, seven feet, something like that. So it varies. Um, all the other locks drop, I think they said 46 feet or 45 feet. And we're starting from lock A and we go down to lock one. Uh, the main excitement though is once we got through lock eight, and underneath the bridge on the other side. Um, they called us on the radio, so you have to monitor channel 14 all the time, and they tell you anything you need to know, or you, know, you can contact them through that channel 14. And they said, hey, uh, you know, Thalia, you're not permitted to tow a dinghy through the canal. You'll have to put it on deck. And uh, that caused a bit of a panic because the dinghy does not stow very well on the deck. It's a real pain in the butt. And when I radioed back to them and I asked, are there any other options? Because it's very difficult for us to stow it on deck. He said, yeah, you can just turn it around and head right out back out the canal. The way you came. So we're getting the first flavor of uh, customer service on the Welland Canal, which was notoriously really oriented towards the commercial ships and pleasure boats are what people call second-class citizens around here. So anyway, we uh, we hastily, there was a rough seawall against uh, on the port side, so we hastily got some dock lines together and tied off on that wall. Um, they had these huge ballers, these big round um, things you can tie a line to, bulbous things, but they were spaced, I don't know, 75 feet apart, so we were able to get lines on one of them, another line on the bow line we had to extend the line further, so it was a pain. But we got on the seawall, we hoisted up the dinghy on the deck, and it's up on the foredeck right now, um, all settled down in and tied down. And uh, the reason why I don't like to do it, first off, it takes up all the space in the foredeck, so for us to work the locks, the next seven locks, uh, we have to work around it, handling the line up there on the bow. Um, it also lays right down on top of the brand new hatches I put in. So um, we put cushions down, but it's not very good for the deck and the hatches. And uh, it's a lot of work to crank it up. I have to crank it up the winch, and the winch is uh, needing a little bit of grease, and it doesn't go up very well. But anyway, we're all settled, uh, got that panic out of the way. We got a long stretch here of about 10 miles between lock 8 and lock 7 to kind of collect ourselves and get prepared. And we move on.
this what it means to be a bow, babe? August 22nd. Tuesday, August 22nd. And we are at the other end of the Welland Canal. Ooh. Hey. Um, Angry probably Orchard. Probably not approved by the Seaway Welland Corporation. Mm. Yeah, Otherwise known not. as the group that follows you through and approves you. But we are having a little beverage here at the end of our day. So we started at 6.30 this morning, left the dock at Port Colburn, uh, the Sugarloaf Harbor Marina. And we made it through eight locks. We're exhausted. We are totally exhausted. So the first lock was pretty easy in the sense that it was down four feet, but we had all these questions and we weren't sure where to pick up the lines, who was what side of the dock the lock to go on, and it just was not very clear, shall we say. <laughs> and then out of lock eight, which is the first lock we did. They told us we needed to raise the 
dinghy on the deck. We were not permitted to tow a dinghy through the, through the canal. So we had to stop, pull over, tie up at a seawall just below lock eight, and hoist the dinghy up on the foredeck, pain in the butt. Um, just because it's heavy and it doesn't stow well and it sits on top of the deck and the hatches and breaks or scratches stuff. Anyway. So we got that up, and then we proceeded through. We go, you go under bridges and various bridges along the way, and we got to lock seven. Um, I think that went fairly smooth. So we were going through with another boat, Pearl, uh, and so we would go in first, and they would come in behind us. So we recorded. And uh, we, Karen, saw me we recorded all this. <laughs> Uh, and then after lock seven, then you go through three triple locks, so six by four, you go through six, and you, out of that you go directly to five, and out of that you directly to four. That's the big drop. You drop at 46 feet on each lock, so that's about 150 feet. I think that's the main elevation that's related to the Niagara Falls. And uh, that was pretty tiring, got through all that. And then I think it... The, and it was windy through that whole thing, too. Yeah. So we kept being blown off of the dock and it was just exhausting to try to hold on to the lines and pay attention to where the boat was with regard to the wall. So yeah. it was definitely tiring. Yeah. I know when back in lock seven the trauma there was that so they hand you the lines and it's supposed to be easier going downbound uh, as opposed to upbound but they gave us the lines and we had these snatch blocks that we were putting the lines through and then anchoring the line on a cleat or a winch and we had all this wind blowing us through the lock to where they were, and I grabbed the stern line that they gave us, these floating polypropylene lines, and I wrapped it, got on the snatch block, and wrapped it around the winch, and the, all this movement of the boat going forward like stopped suddenly, and I could have sworn either the line was going to bust, or the winch was going to be pulled out of the deck, it was like a huge amount of strain, and uh, so then we knew we should slow down a little bit more, but it's hard because we had the wind blowing us through, and you need to have speed to steer the boat, so. That was a challenge with that one. And then we had 6x4, and I think we stopped after that. The canal um, authorities... Before you, 2 and before 1, yeah. Before 2 and before 1, yeah. So, so we, we went through, through three. 3. And yeah. then they radioed us, and they had a ship coming upbound that we had to get out of the way of and tie up on the side right before lock 2. And so both us and Pearl did that. And uh, so we waited there for the Alga Way to proceed through, and uh, I don't know, it took maybe half an hour, an hour, or something like that. And then we got back underway, uh, went through Lock 2. While we're in Lock 2, they said, well, you're going to have to wait at the top of Lock 1 because we got the Algo Nova going through, I think it was. Yeah. That was a lot longer wait because there was actually a tug on the other side of us coming out of Lock 2 that was actually waiting for us. Hey, you know, we're somebody. We're somebody, yeah, yeah maybe. So, uh, so we got through the lock two, and they were sort of holding position and went right in the lock after us. But we had to then tie up on the seawall um, to top of lock one. And it's really, the whole system is kind of really built around commercial ships. I mean, it's, you come up to these seawalls, and all of the two that we tied to were pretty new. Yeah. And they had these long rubber bumper things along the side, which we scraped against didn't really it scuffed the side of the boat but didn't cause any damage but these big bollards that are big round concrete like, things yeah, yeah. Like this. you Huge. wrap your line around that and there's space like 75 or 100 feet apart so you maybe get a line of one but the other one's too long or in the wrong position so perfect for a big ship but not great for a pleasure boat yeah so, so you know the other thing we were contending with today we almost uh, didn't decided not to go through the locks because there was really heavy winds and the heavy the winds were either directly behind us and pushing us through the locks um, faster than we wanted to go or they were coming at us um, um, astern I mean um, a beam and and pushing us off the walls when we were trying to hold on there was one period of time can't remember which lock it was in where the wind peaked at 25 knots yeah, and um, while we were true. sitting still and holding on and <clears throat> and we're just holding on to these lines while you know the wind is just essentially trying to push us off of the wall so it was really 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 tiring um, 
we were pretty much lucked out on the weather, although the wind was tough though, because there's squalls all the way around us. There's squalls in Lake Ontario, and we saw really heavy um, clouds go overhead, and we know that they are either causing havoc before us or, or down from us. It looked like one in particular was really, really dark clouds was probably going to be a squall, you know, a little ways down on the coast of Lake Ontario. So we were really thankful that we didn't have to deal with the wind, or the, the rain today, in addition to the wind. We had the wind, yeah, it was a drag, but um, you always have something, and I think, you know, one aspect is uh, we didn't have the beating sun beating down on us, and yesterday it was really, really hot. Really hot, yeah. So, um, in that regard, it was nice. So now we are tied up on a seawall after uh, lock one and we're maybe a few miles out from Lake Ontario but this is just a courtesy dock. We're tied up and um, just happy to be finished and tomorrow we'll make our way over to Toronto. So that's it. Yep. And so we're going to enjoy our angry orchard and our two-hearted ale from Bell's Brewery. I think it's Link. a Michigan brewer brewery. Yes, so, I think it is, yes. We're drinking local. We're drinking yeah. local. I don't know if this is Shop local. local. All right. Anyway, yeah. here's to Lake Ontario, the last lake that we will experience. So we've now been in Lake Erie, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, back into Lake Huron, back into Lake Erie, and now we're going into Lake Ontario. Um, so this summer's journey missed Superior, but... Um, this is the last lake that we will experience for this particular journey, so we're excited. All right, that's it.